Okay, thank you for attending our webinar today. Our topic today is Modbus TCP Data Acquisition Modules, and we'll be featuring our ET7200 series uh, with dual Ethernet ports. Now here's our agenda for today. First, we'll discuss data acquisition using Modbus TCP. Uh, then we'll show some typical configurations for our data acquisition modules using Modbus TCP. And finally, we'll, or actually then we'll uh, do some cost-saving benefits of being able to use our new data-chainable uh, Ethernet I.O. modules. And finally, we'll go over our Modbus TCP data acquisition products, including our ET7200. <clears throat> ICP DOS was established in 1993. Our headquarters is in Xinchu, Taiwan, and ICP DOS USA was launched in 2001 to support the North and South American markets. Our company is ISO 9001 certified, and our products are Rojas compliant and we're a Microsoft embedded partner. Modbus was developed by Modicon in 1979, which is now owned by Schneider Electric. Modbus is open source and royalty free and is the most commonly used industrial protocol. Um, let's see, it's a serial based protocol using RS-485 traditionally, and you can connect up to 255 devices along a single bus. Modbus R2 has some limitations though because it is a serial protocol. Each slave device along the RS-485 must be daisy chained and serial communication is slow. Um, networks must be planned due to distance and wiring limitations and are not easily modified. This is great for small applications, but for larger applications, uh, the distance limitation and the fact you have to daisy chain along a single bus can sometimes be a problem. Uh, here's a typical uh, schematic for um, a system using Modbus RTU. You have a serial master. Notice you can only have one master at a time uh, talking to many RS-485 devices along a single RS-485 bus up to 4,000 feet. Modbus TCP, however, was developed in 1999. It's similar in Modbus, or similar in structure to Modbus RTU in the fact that uh, you can create similar commands and requests, uh, but it is implemented over an Ethernet network, which makes it much more easily expandable, easier to have larger networks, and much faster than uh, a serial communication. Devices traditionally have a unique IP address to differentiate the devices, as opposed to a unique uh, Modbus ID, which limits the number of devices to 255 devices. Uh, here's some uh, benefits of Modbus TCP. Uh, Ethernet is everywhere, so it's very easy to uh, add Modbus TCP devices to an existing network or build the infrastructure using a series of Ethernet switches and uh, uh, adding it to your router or uh, <coughs> Ethernet existing Ethernet network. <coughs> uh, just plug into an open existing Ethernet port and uh, you can uh, gain communication to the Modbus uh, TCP device. Uh, Ethernet has faster communication speeds, much faster than serial communication. Uh, it's expandable through the internet, so if you have remote sites or uh, devices uh, within the facility but still within the Ethernet network, you can uh, connect to them uh, remotely. Uh, you can allow for multiple uh, Modbus masters as opposed to Modbus RT where you can only have a single Modbus master communicating to the slave devices at a time. Let's see, it's also very commonly used. Uh, there are drivers for most automation software and most of the standard software out there like LabVIEW and SCADA software. And the hardware that's required is only an Ethernet port. So if you know, most PCs and laptops already have Ethernet ports, and most PLCs and controllers nowadays also have Ethernet ports. Uh, here's a simple uh, diagram showing uh, how 
a master and uh, slaves communicate. Uh, note uh, that there should be an Ethernet switch or a single device connected directly to an Ethernet port. In this case, the master devices place requests for data or statuses of the slave devices individually uh, based on their IP address, port 502, and the specific Modbus address for the specific uh, data they're requiring. And you could have multiple master devices communicating to the same slave devices at a time because Ethernet is moving very fast and uh, the hardware will support this. Uh, Modbus TCP is easy to implement. Um, you just simply connect a PC or a master uh, through an Ethernet switch and connect a uh, Modbus TCP slave device to the same switch. Uh, you need to make sure the devices are on the same network uh, with the unique IP address, but uh, pretty much it's as straightforward as that. And if you want to add a second master or additional slave devices, you just need additional Ethernet ports on the switch or router. Uh, Modbus, RT, and TCP are both open source, and third-party implementation and compatibility is uh, very standard. Uh, the most, they are the most popular industrial protocols, and most automation uh, hardware and software manufacturers can communicate to uh, Modbus devices. Uh, some applications are connecting to a PLC as an additional Modbus slave device to give additional I.O. for, uh, like, say, remote locations or uh, places away from the controller or the cabinet uh, to reduce wiring. Uh, SCADA software, where you can uh, read data from different devices throughout a plant or facility and uh, give statuses on the screen uh, for data logging applications and for automation applications. <clears throat> Our ET7000 series and uh, ET7200 series, here's a part number breakdown. Uh, basically, in the first um, uh, portion of the part number, it's either ET or PET. The P stands for Power of Ethernet and is an additional feature. It requires a special uh, hardware switch, which will supply power through the Ethernet cable. I'll show you an example of that shortly. Um, the next digit, 7, is just part of the part number. Uh, the following digit is either a 0 or a 2. That defines how many Ethernet ports uh, are supported. A 0 means one Ethernet port, and a 2 in that position means two Ethernet ports. And the final model number is the I.O. configuration. <clears throat> we also have the TET series, which is a tiny series, which uh, just has less I.O. channels. We'll go over an example or some sample uh, models in a few minutes. Uh, note that the ET7200 also has a physical reset button and is slightly bigger, of course. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of our ET and ET7200 series. Uh, the ET7200 series is slightly bigger and the terminal block is slightly larger to accommodate more I.O. channels. And also note at the bottom, on the bottom left corner of the ET7000, there's a single Ethernet port. And the bottom left corner of the ET7200 series has two Ethernet ports. This is very important for being able to daisy chain, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Oh, actually, here's a slide right now. <clears throat> Traditionally, uh, Modbus TCP devices have single Ethernet ports and all of them must have their own unique uh, Ethernet port on the Ethernet switch or router. So if you have uh, one master and four slave devices, you can connect them to five uh, Ethernet ports. With the ET7200, however, you're able to utilize a single Ethernet port for the slave devices and daisy chain your devices similar to RS-485. But you do have the ability to I use less ports on the router or switch and thus save hardware and possibly wiring if everything is along a single uh, a line. Uh, LAN bypass is a feature of the ET7200, so if the module is off 
or uh, uh, not being uh, logged in at, or not being connected to at that moment, you can still log into each additional device along the same uh, daisy chain of Ethernet cables. Um, here's some additional uh, information on the ET7200, the features. Uh, there is an ID and password and IP address configuration, which uh, you can use for communication security. Uh, the protocols that it supports are Modbus TCP, UDP, and CGI. Uh, there's a dual watchdog feature in there for communication and uh, IO status. Uh, there's a power on value and a safe value. The power on value is the uh, uh, you define the status of the I.O. Uh, when the module is turned on to avoid uh, uh, unwanted devices to be, uh, say, dispensing or a valve open when power is applied. And there's a safe value so that if you lose communication to the device for too long, uh, the module will go to a safe value where uh, it's predefined, so to go safe state of the I.O. <clears throat> I.O. pairing is also available for the ET7200 along with the ET7000 series. With this, I'll show you a slide in a minute, I think, it's, uh, actually I guess it's two slides. This shows just shows the re reset button of the ET7200 and the power inputs and uh, the LED status for the digital I.O. Um, this shows a slide showing the power over Ethernet feature. Uh, note that the part number must have the P, as in PET, uh, in the part number to have this feature. But uh, with PoE, uh, Ethernet and power are passed through the Category 5 cable uh, so that uh, you can power the module without wiring additional power to it. This is great for uh, large applications where um, you want to save on wiring costs. Uh, but note that for the 7200 series, only the first module will receive power of Ethernet. Only Ethernet data is passed to the second uh, Ethernet port. So if you have multiple uh, PET7200 that you plan to daisy chain, you will need to power the additional devices along the daisy chain uh, with power. It will not be passed through with PoE. Uh, we went through this already. This is the part number breakdown for the ET7200 series. Uh, here's the model numbers that uh, we have currently. Um, let's see, the first column shows the ET and the PET series with single Ethernet ports. The second column shows the models available with dual Ethernet ports, noted as ET72 or ET70. Um, the number of I.O. channels for analog inputs and the sensor types, uh, we have specific models which support thermistor, RTD, and thermocouple inputs. And some of these models also have additional uh, DO channels for uh, turning on, say, alarms. Uh, we have some multifunction modules which have analog input, analog output, digital input, and digital output combinations. They're shown here in this table. Again, the first columns are single Ethernet port. Uh, the second column is our dual Ethernet port models. Let's see, here's our uh, selection guide for digital I.O. modules. Some of the digital inputs have uh, counters, and they're noted in the boxes. Uh, we have some relay output modules, again, with some digital inputs as well on some models. Uh, we have some models specifically designed for high-speed inputs and counters uh, like encoders. Uh, this is an example of a system uh, just showing uh, Modbus TCP connectivity. Uh, this shows our WinPAC and VPAC connected to uh, standard Ethernet switch like our NS208, and you can connect to up to 100 uh, Modbus TCP devices or slave devices. 
this is showing our I.O. pairing feature. This is a uh, feature that's strictly with our ET7200 and ET7000 series. Um, let's see, note that on one end you have an input module, on the other end you have an output module. In pairing mode, the output will turn on when the corresponding input of the other module is turned on. In this application it shows a, a house and gate, so when somebody uh, pushes the button and says they're at the gate. It'll signal an input on the within the house, and somebody can physically unlock or lock, well, I guess unlock in this case, to open the gate to allow the person in without uh, being at the terminal. So meaning they can do it over distance uh, through Ethernet. <clears throat> Uh, here are some industries and applications which uh, Modbus TCP is very widely used. Uh, industrial and uh, SCADA applications, of course. Uh, solar farms and wind farms. Manufacturing. Uh, conveyor applications. Waste treatment. Uh, food processing, very heavily used. Uh, data logging application. We offer a free, easy data logger software package uh, for data logging, or you can connect to almost any uh, industrial SCADA package or data logging package. Uh, laboratories uh, using LabVIEW or uh, uh, PCs to monitor. Automotive and robotics, uh, security, and vending machines. These are just some applications, but uh, it can be used in many, many, many others. <clears throat> uh, let's see, this uh, presentation uh, includes a a quick video. This video will show how the ET7200 models are configured and uh, how you connect to our easy data logger software. Uh, brand new out of the box, the module comes with a static IP address. You use our mini OS7 utility to search for the module and set the IP address. In this case, we'll just uh, change it to 192.168.255.1. Uh, set the new IP address, put it into effect. Uh, note that on this scan, it does come up at the new IP address. And then you can open up a web browser. And you just simply type the IP address that you just uh, configured, 192.168.255.1. The module will prompt you for a password. By default, admin with capital A is the uh, default password. You'll log into the module to configure it and view the IO status. This is where you can change the network setting if you want through the web browser. Uh, the basic settings are, again, if you want to change the Modbus TCP port, but that's rarely done. And the module IO configuration. This is where you'd set the individual IO channel types and whether you enable or disable the channel. and you can program in the safe value for outputs. And then using our web HMI feature, you can actually view the status of and change the uh, status of outputs. So this is good for debugging and testing of your sensors. And let's see, note at the bottom it says communication status good. Uh, that means that you're communicating to the module, and if you change the I.O. status, um, you can view it here, like if you had a sensor connected or a push button. Uh, next, we'll show you how to connect using our Easy Data Logger software. So within Easy Data Logger, we create a Modbus TCP connection. Uh, the host address is the IP address of the module, in this case 192.168.255.1. Uh, the default port is 502. Once you create the connection, you choose the device. In this case, it's ET7255. Out there, we can either enter them manually uh, by checking the box and just uh, putting the number of uh, digital inputs and digital output channels. In this case, it's eight channels starting with uh, zero to seven, uh, so we added eight digital inputs, eight digital outputs, and we close. 
then here's our list of IO channels. And we'll just add them to the uh, work group. And we'll add our digital outputs to the work group. And now we'll have uh, eight uh, digital inputs and eight digital outputs to monitor. We'll click home to uh, get to the main interface and start the communication. Uh, note in the far right corner, uh, you want to monitor to make sure the communication stays turns green to show good. And we can uh, see the status of the digital inputs and outputs. And they can uh, be controlled here. Uh, we'll turn on one of the digital outputs. And you'll see the corresponding values change within Easy Data Logger. <clears throat> and that's shown here on track one. We change the values again. We'll see the values change over here. And from there, uh, the values will be saved into the data log at the corresponding um, uh, sampling rate. And uh, you'll have a data logging package uh, pre-done. Uh, finally, uh, does anyone have any questions? I'll turn on the mic so that we can, or actually, I guess, type your questions in the chat box, and we'll get them answered. If you have questions after the webinar that uh, uh, you'd like to discuss uh, separately, or if they don't pertain to this, uh, please feel free to contact us at any of these phone numbers. Uh, you can contact us through our email as well. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google. Well, Google Plus is being obsoleted, but uh, Pinterest or uh, YouTube as well. And this video will be posted on our website uh, a couple of days or maybe even today. <clears throat> Does anyone, if anyone has questions, please type them in the chat box. Okay, I don't see any questions, but if anyone has any suggestions for future topics, uh, please you know, feel free to email us or even type them in the chat box or uh, call us and let us know. We'd be happy to hear back from you. And we look forward to discussing any applications that you may have. Uh, so please uh, 